Hey, welcome back to Stewman Rides. Uh, we're gonna do another instructional video here at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. Got a nice uh, racetrack to ourselves at sunset, and we're gonna talk about a more complex corner this time. Last time we talked about turn three here at Chuckwalla, going, uh, what was it, the clockwise direction. So now we're gonna talk about uh, the last couple corners, which turn into the first couple corners when you go the other direction. So when you go counterclockwise, this becomes turn one and two. Uh, I, I believe it's actually labeled uh, 17 and 18 or 16 and 17, something like that. We'll have to check the trap map later. But in any way, these are the first two corners that you hit when you're going counterclockwise direction. So when you're going counterclockwise, uh, this is a more complex corner than the one we talked about last time. So I'm gonna give you some tips and pointers and things to think about when you're uh, trying to choose a line for this corner. So last time we talked about really focusing on getting a good drive off the corner, picking up some reference points that'll put you on a good line, how to choose a good line for that very simple corner. This time we're gonna talk about choosing a line for a more complex corner. So this is uh, actually two corners, right? So as you can see, when you come into turns one and two, it's a little kink to the right and then a very long sweeping uh, 180 degree or thereabouts, a little less than 180 degree uh, corner to the left. So for this video, we're gonna be talking about turns 16 and 17 at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. Although we'll be talking about running the track in the counterclockwise direction. So these would kind of be the first two corners that you hit at the end of the front straightaway. Um, so here's an overhead view of the corner that I took with my drone. Direction of travel here is going to be from the bottom of the screen, uh, from the left to the right, uh, running from the bottom of the screen and then around that long left-hand corner, in this case, onto another straightaway. So uh, bottom of the screen is the front straightaway. You come into a right-hand corner that's a little kink to the right there, that's turn 17, and then the long left-hander is turn 16. Uh, we also call that turn patience because um, it, uh, yeah, obviously it requires a lot of patience to get on the gas. You got to kind of stay neutral throttle for a while and uh, set up a good drive off of the corner. So in either direction, this corner does require a lot of patience. So hence the name. Um, just a note too, I took these photos with my drone and a nice thing about doing that as opposed to referring to the track map is um, you can actually see some of the reference points that we're going to be talking about uh, on the surface of the racetrack, some of the darker cracks and stuff. So uh, kind of neat to see that as well as the curbing uh, represented uh, in the images. So yeah, I apologize I didn't take in a whole bunch of images of that straight that follows the corner. I just kind of stuck in a gray line there with Photoshop, but you kind of get the point that there's a straightaway that follows this and it leads into another set of corners. So. Yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about for this video. I figured I'd show it a little bit earlier on in this one to give you a good perspective of the corners that we're going to be talking about prior to kind of walking you through it. So I thought I'd give you a look at the corner from the uh, rider's perspective at speed on a motorcycle. Uh, I apologize for the shaky video. It's kind of old. It's the only video I could find in this direction um, that was of decent quality. So show it to you one more time down the front straight we go through the little kink on the right uh, missed my apex going in I'm a little wide but probably trying to set up the rider in front of me uh, gonna hit a nice late apex past that cone and then on to the straightaway that follows you're coming down the straightaway the first thing that you want to pick is a uh, turn-in point that's going to help you line up a straight shot through that entrance, right? You got that little kink on the uh, uh, on the right, so a little kink to the right, and then you start the left-hand turn proper. And uh, as you're coming down the straightaway, you have these braking markers. You have the beginning of the curbing that you can use, a uh, bunch of reference points available to you. Um, and what I choose to do is choose a point probably halfway between the two and the one board here somewhere in that neighborhood is a pretty good place to turn in 
and you actually start a fairly slow turn in for this corner it's not like a a uh, quick turn in like we talked about last time, going in real deep and turning the bike real sharp. You kind of turn in a little bit early and start heading towards that curb on the right-hand side. So the idea here is you're trying to draw an angle where you can go as straight as possible through that first section of track there. So it's hard to go perfectly straight. You actually have to kick it a little bit to the right uh, in order to go around that curbing on the right hand side uh, and then you can go pretty much straight to the curbing on the left um, but this corner is a little bit different where we're not trying to stay out real wide real late uh, we're actually trying to head more straight into the corner and what we're trying to do is maximize the entry to this corner last time we talked about a simple corner turn three we're trying to maximize the exit right this corner we're actually gonna try and maximize both the entry and the exit to the corner. It's, the entry to this corner is important because it falls at the end of a really long straightaway. And if you go into this and try to set your entry speed at the beginning of the corner, uh, it may not be the fastest way through it, right? You have a lot of straight line here that you can do a lot of pretty hard braking as you enter this corner. So what we're doing is we're trying to draw a straight line from that left-hand side of the racetrack and then a straight line past these two curbs and lead us into this corner where we can get keep the bike pretty upright and trail the brakes in here super, super deep. So last time in turn three, we were trying to get off of the brakes as quickly as we could. This time, we're actually trying to use the brakes longer and maybe a little bit lighter into this corner so we're kind of trailing the brakes very very deep into this little less maybe it is 180 degrees but it's it's close to 180 degree uh it's not a hairpin but it's just a long 180 degree corner so if you come past the curb on the left there come shooting past that straight line to this curb on the right as you come in then you can let the bike run out towards the middle of the corner. So your first set of reference points are pretty straightforward, right? Coming down the straightaway, you're gonna go somewhere between that two board and the one board. You're gonna try and draw a straight line past the curbing on your right-hand side as you're coming in, and then past this curbing that will be on your left-hand side as you come in. And then you, as you come past that curbing, that's your first apex, you can let the bike run wide through the middle of this corner. So one of the neat things about this corner is you can go pretty straight into it. You can trail the brakes really deep into it. And it's okay to let the bike run a little bit wide after you hit that first apex. Because what it's gonna do is actually set you up a little bit better for the exit of this corner. So we come in, we let the bike run a little bit wide. And now we start looking for reference points for well, how wide do we want to let it run? And where do we want to start to pull the bike back towards our second apex? So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the track here. We have a crack right on the inside of the corner here. We've got a crack on the inside of the corner, a little ways off the pavement. We have some cracks running perpendicular to the racetrack to help us out for reference points. And then you just basically have the width of the track too. So one thing that you can use if there's no like really super solid reference points, you can use you can use the width of the track as a reference point in itself. So for example, you can say, I wanna let the bike run out maybe about half track uh, through the middle of this corner to start to set me up for a late apex on the exit of the corner. So you come into the corner pretty hard on the brakes in a straight line, let the bike run wide, trail off the brakes, start to roll on the gas maybe a little bit through the middle of the corner here. And then as you're approaching the middle of the corner, you wanna start looking for some reference points that you can use to tell you that it's, start to, it's time to start bringing the bike back towards the apex uh, on the exit of this corner. 
So now seemed like a good time to kind of talk about the line that we're trying to achieve for this corner and why we're trying to, to approach this corner the way I'm suggesting. So I've drawn here the line that I've been kind of describing uh, throughout this video and we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about the exit middle and the exit of the corner a little bit later on but I kind of figured it would be a good time to give you uh, just a visual on what we're looking to do to this corner and why. So as you can see uh, we're turning in pretty early on the on the straightaway uh, you know we talked about turning in somewhere between the two and the one board uh, you, that can vary quite a bit in this corner some people like to turn in a little bit later some turn in a little bit earlier um, but what you're looking to do is try to get a straight line uh, past those two curbs as you enter the corner. So you have the curb on the right for turn 17 and then the beginning of the curb on the left for turn 16. And as you can see, you can straighten that out pretty good. That allows you to do a lot of your braking very deep into the corner. And because it's okay to actually let the bike run a little bit wide, you can keep the bike upright even past that second apex um, and kind of ease the thing over, still trailing the brakes deep into the corner um, to allow you to kind of carry uh, a lot of entry speed and extend that braking zone deep into this corner. So because you hit that first apex early, it forces the bike to run a little bit wide through the middle of the corner. And that's okay because we're gonna start to pull it back for the exit. We have a lot of time to do that. You can see that this is a little less than 180 degrees, um, but pretty close to it. And you're in this corner for quite some time. So you can let the bike run out through the middle of the corner and then start to pull it back for a nice late apex later in the corner to maximize that exit. Uh, if you apex this corner too early or try to get on the gas too early, what happens is you end up running wide coming off of the corner and you can't drive the bike as hard because you're on the edge of the tire all the way uh, much longer than you would be if you were able to kind of straighten out that exit as you see on this line here. So um, this is kind of the line that we're shooting for and, uh, and why we're actually shooting for that line. So I'd like to try and pull the bike back about halfway through the corner. I know that's a little bit uh, vague, but you can use some of the stripes on the inside of the track uh, you can use some of these perpendicular cracks um, and I like this one that's actually right in front of us here uh, to give me an indication that I need to start pulling the bike back. So if I'm somewhere in this neighborhood, about half track or maybe a little bit less uh, off the curbing, we're probably, oh I don't know, a good uh, 10 or 15 feet off the curbing at this point. So what we want to do is when we get to a reference point that tells us, okay, we want to start pulling the bike back, now we want to start looking for an apex reference point. So obviously the obvious apex reference point in this corner is that cone, which would make a lot of sense if it was put in the right spot, but it isn't. It's pretty early. And if you apex at that cone, you're going to probably start running pretty wide. So if we were to say that we were somewhere out in this neighborhood, if you look at the line, that you would take if you were to apex at the curbing near that cone, right? Where would you be pointed? Pretty much straight off the track, right? You're not pointed down the straightaway yet. Um, and so apexing at that cone is probably a little bit early. So if we were staying in this direction and now we're heading towards the apex, and if we were to apex about here, facing this direction, right? Here's our direction of travel. Where are we pointed? Pretty much straight off the edge of the track. So apex reference points, those cones, you can't always trust them. They're not necessarily in the right spot. But if you pick a point, let's say 20 feet past this cone to apex, we'll see how that works out. So let's say we have a point 20 feet past the cone uh, and uh, we're gonna apex there. So what I'll do, I'm going to take my hat and we'll throw it down at that spot and then we'll back up a little bit and we'll see how that apex would work out, right? So we'll say if we were to apex somewhere in 
oh, I don't know. Let's say this neighborhood here. All right, so now you get to share, stare at my shiny head. Luckily, there's no sun out to, for it to reflect off of. So we're gonna back up a little bit. We'll get a little bit further away from that hat. So that's our new apex reference point. It's almost at the end of the curbing, but not quite at the end of the curbing. So if we ran our bike out to mid track and we were in this neighborhood approaching that hat, now look where you're pointed, right? Right towards the end of the curbing on the outside edge of the racetrack and that's a pretty good distance down the straightaway. So you gotta remember, you're gonna carry a little bit of lean angle off this corner, right? You're not going straight up and down as you hit the apex, so you're still leaned over a little bit. But if you were to apex in this neighborhood, in this direction of travel, now instead of heading straight off the track, we're actually heading down that straightaway. So it pays to be critical when, put my hat back on, <laughs> Sorry, it pays to be critical when you're picking an apex point, right? Because if you rely on those cones, right? Look how early that is compared to where we are now and where we should probably think about apexing this corner. Those cones will suck you in, right? It's an easy reference point to use and it looks like, yeah, that should be the right spot, right? They put that cone there for a reason. Well, that cone may have been placed there for cars, might have been placed there for traveling in the other direction. In this case, it is probably placed for better for cars than it would be for motorcycles. Um, so if you start relying on things like that and not thinking about them critically, you can fall into the trap of getting to an early apex, running wide, coming off of a corner. And by the way, this corner, the exit of this corner, leads on to a fairly decent length straightaway. So if you don't get a good drive off of this corner then you're going to suffer all the way down the straightaway that follows so when it comes to choosing a line through a more complex series of corner there's a couple things that you want to think about right number one what are you trying to maximize right in this particular corner you're actually trying to maximize both the entrance and the exit so we're trying to draw a straight line into the corner so we can go as deep as possible going in keep the bike straight up and down, stay on the brakes super, super late and super deep, and set our slowest speed in the corner well into the corner, past the point even where we turn in. But then this corner also leads on to a significant straightaway. Luckily, it's long enough, it's 180 degrees, so we got a lot of time in this corner to kind of figure things out and set up a good exit as well. So. Last time we talked about maximizing the exit of that corner. That's really what mattered. We were almost sacrificing the entrance a little bit, going in super deep, choosing a very deep reference point for where to turn in for that simple corner. And we're all about focusing on the drive off of that corner. This corner is a different story. You need to maximize both. You're looking to try and go into the corner as fast as you possibly can, hold your speed as deep into the corner as you possibly can to maximize that entrance because it is at the end of a pretty long straightaway. It's the front straight here at Chuckwalla. So you have a lot of speed going in there and the longer you can maintain that speed, the better your lap time is gonna be. But we also wanna maximize the exit on this corner. Like I said, luckily enough, the corner is long enough that you can do both. But you need to choose reference points wisely and you need to choose them all the way through the corner. Entrance of the corner was pretty straightforward. We got a couple curbing. We got some braking markers to tell us where to line things up. We're kind of going straight through those curbs and then we let the thing run wide. It pays to have some, some nice reference points through the middle of the corner, those cracks, stains, skid marks, things like that, that can tell you, okay, this is how far out I want to run it. And this is where I want to start bringing the bike back towards the curbing so I can get to a nice late second apex and really drive off the corner. So hopefully that helps. It's a pretty challenging corner here at Chuckwalla. It's starting to get dark. And so uh, I'm gonna go get some barbecue in the pits, which we do after each race weekend. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. And we'll talk about a different type of corner and maybe go through some, uh, some different lines and different things that you might find important while you're out riding on the racetrack. So thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's more to come. 
uh, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, if you disagree with what I'm talking about in, in terms of the lines and you want to have that discussion, please feel free to comment on YouTube and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions just as quickly as I can. So thanks a lot for watching Stu Man Rides and uh, like I said, subscribe to the channel if this type of video interests you.